There's one particular backyard brawl that I will remember forever, and one particular backyard brawl that I was kind of forced to talk about all week this week because media folks wanted to chat about it because it is a game in the history of college football that nobody could have expected going the way that it went, including myself and all of my teammates. It was in 2007. We had a fucking team. Now, Darius? Don't want to talk about it. Okay, Darius went to UConn. <laughs> oh. Darius had to run into the Good bus hall that was what they were at the time. Yeah. Not bad. UConn yeah. was up bad. Donna Brown was up there. Darius Butler was yeah. up there. Yeah. I believe Dana was there at the beginning. He was, he was gone. He yeah. left. But we used to just fucking steamroll everybody. Of course. Okay? And I was just lucky to be there. This is my first real baptism into football was this team. I grew up in the soccer world. For high school, I'd show up on Fridays. I'd kick. I'd do my thing. And I'd leave West Virginia. When I got there, uh, a couple months before school started, we were the first freshman class. I was able to do that via the NCAA is going early the summer beforehand. And Mike Barwis was a was a fucking guy. Now he yeah, made man. me into the person I am, but those were tough days. Those were tough workouts. Mm-hmm. That was my first hello, how you doing? This is how the football world operates. Practices, meetings, how it was gonna be just being a kicker at the time. Then I would transition into a punter as well and do both my sophomore season. But I was really learning football culture through that entire thing. Always been an NFL fan, didn't know much about college, but you know, the insides of what football looked like. And I was very lucky to be on a great fucking team. Not just good, a great fucking team. Now, I rode the coattails to some magical moments. We obviously won the Sugar Bowl our freshman year. Now, there was a lot of vets on that team too, older guys that were fucking hell of good players. Uh, Jay Henry, Mike Lorello, Dan Moses, and the boys up there, Sheffy, all the guys. They were good people. Good people up there, but they were the older class, the older regime. Our freshman class, which I didn't redshirt, so Pat White, Steve Slayton didn't redshirt either. Owen Schmidt was a part of that group. Darius Ray Nod was a part of that group. I came in alongside a great recruiting class. Reed Williams, who was in my wedding, and Nate. I mean, we just had... We had a team. We had a very good fucking team. We loved each other off the field. We partied. I mean, we did. Well, not everybody. I'm not painting a broad brush. I think we probably had some nerds on the team somewhere. Nobody that I knew. We had a fucking blast. We lived how, you know, you would think a team that went to school in Morgantown, West Virginia, where there's penny pitchers on Wednesdays and drink till you drown Tuesdays right. and like $5 and spend no more type Thursdays. I right. mean, it was a great time. Our basketball team was fucking unbelievable yeah. at the time. I had... And I lived, I, I went out too much. I was a little bit too reckless, a little bit too carefree, but everything was all too kumbaya for me. R- uh, freshman year, I kicked, uh, okay, not bad. We won the fucking Sugar Bowl. All right, this is awesome. This is how it's supposed to be. Beat Georgia in Georgia. The week of that game, we're housing beers and wings, and the Georgia guys got like water and salads at events. It was just like we were not supposed to be the team that we were supposed to be. Many scholarships were pulled from guys from other schools. They ended up at West Virginia. Pat White was offered to be a wide receiver, I believe, at LSU or Alabama, not a quarterback. Nobody really saw him at that. He was drafted to play baseball like three times by the time. So we were really a group of misfits that had Mike Barwis in the weight room kicking the fucking shit out of us, and we would go. We were a lot of workers, a lot of Pittsburgh guys, you know, a lot of Florida guys in there. We had a working group, and then Rich Rodriguez was the most intense human being that I had ever seen in my life. This is the most intense, most passionate person I had ever seen about the little things, because his big belief is you take care of the little things, big things will take care of themselves. But those fucking little things need to be pointed out, need to be addressed, and need to be treated as if they are a fucking massive ordeal because long term they will be at the time i don't think any of us really understood why this motherfucker is always mad like hey (laughs) things are pretty good we're having a good time what the fuck dude we were up 25 28 we go down the sec we play fucking mississippi state Mm -hmm. we win by a lot afterwards we're getting motherfucked (laughs) from some penalty that happened and it's just like we needed that guy to be our coach we needed barwis and i think we needed each other and in 2007 in the backyard brawl the team needed me to do my fucking job at that point i'd become a college kicker that people expected to make kicks so when i would miss a kick obviously people would be alarmed at that point didn't start out that way my freshman year grew into that particular thing i think going into the backyard brawl in 2007 we'd already won two bowl games before that uh, freshman sophomore year going into that game i had made like 10 straight field goals who knows how many extra points i mean i was i was playing probably my best ball kicking my best ball and then first quarter first drive i miss a fucking 20 yarder 
What are you doing, you idiot, doofus? We all knew what was on the line. Third drive, I missed a 30-some yarder wide right. First one wide left. I think I tried to overcompensate, missed the next one wide right. And little did I know that that would definitely come in to affect the rest of my life. Because after that first quarter ended, we go into halftime. I think we had the lead. Second half, we end up losing that game 13-9. to Our shots that go into a national championship, which that team deserved, that team that I was very lucky to be on, deserved to go to a national championship. And, and fucking ruin whoever, I think it was Ohio State or LSU. LSU. Uh, I think LSU got in because of us. Oh, okay. Oh. So I think it would have been Ohio State. It was, yeah. And that, those Ohio State boys, I understand they're big, they're strong. Fucking Steve and Pat had a different speed. Yeah. That oh, yeah. would have been. Different. Oh. Oh, we would have won. We would have fucking won. But instead, we ended up losing that game. And uh, what happened to our team, uh, Rich Rod leaves. He goes to Michigan. Uh, there's new people brought in that are planning for the future, not really for the current. So, like, our senior year just kind of comes a wash. And it just is a moment that I have tried to basically bury deep because of how much guilt I feel from what happened that evening. Uh, because the, the people that I care about, my teammates, my family, my friends at West Virginia that I got to know, uh, my roommates that I live with there who are also on the team, their friends and family, I guess, at the same time, those people, what they had to experience because of my performance in the first quarter, it was just the worst night of my entire life. Um, thought about maybe disappearing, never being seen again after that. I was told it by a lot of people walking by our house. Had a lot of bottles thrown at our fucking house. Had bottles thrown in my car. Everybody knew where I lived because I fucking was always out and about and we had a massive uh, team chemistry building barbecue right? oh, yeah. yes. every single year. Yes. Of course. Was not a party. It was no, not a party. Correct. It was a team chemistry building barbecue at the end of training camp and the entire city fucking showed up at it. So literally everybody knew where I lived and on that particular evening I learned a quick lesson about you can be known by a lot of people, you can be loud, but if you don't do your fucking job, they are certainly going to let you know about it. I uh, hit Rock bottom, I'd say, that evening. I, at one point the next day, I got in my car. I kind of just drove away, was going to disappear, never come back, didn't talk to anybody. For whatever reason, I turned back around, and my teammates uh, were so cool. And they talked to Reed this week for Sports Illustrated. Ross Dellinger did. Reed Williams was my roommate. And he told his story. And Ross Dellinger, writes for Sports Illustrated, I don't like doing interviews. I don't like talking to people. Uh, there's too much of me right now anyways. And also, anytime I talk to somebody, they'll take like a tiny quote from me. And everybody hears how I speak every fucking day. They'll take a tiny quote and then they'll insert their opinions on what I was thinking. But if they would have just continued to quote, you'll get exactly how I'm actually fucking feeling. So I don't really enjoy the whole media game because A, too much. B, they're never going to accurately depict what I actually mean because I'm a fucking, you know, idiot. And it's hard to understand that. So Ross had reached out to me. He wrote the Sports Illustrated article and I did not answer. I don't know Ross like that. He came on our show. We're not like he doesn't follow me. I don't follow him. We I, I'd never met him in real life. I respect and appreciate his work, but he wanted to talk about 13.9. I was like, I don't, I don't want to talk about this. So he interviews my guy, Reed. Reed tells me, hey. You're going, this guy's just asking about you, basically. So this story is going to happen whether you want to give your side or not. So I called Ross. I thought he did a great job with it. I thought he was very, very kind. I thought he was very nice. I appreciated the opportunity to talk about it because reading that article and everybody that's reached out to me since that article has come out yesterday has been a really fucking cool story and a cool moment for me that I think I needed. So, like, I think these last two days have been a lot. For me, there's been a lot of guilt that has been felt. There's been a lot of bad memories that have been brought up. But there's also been a lot of closure, I think, with a lot of fucking people, including me and Coach Rod, texting each other mm -hmm. the last nice. couple of days. So, like, <clears throat> I hope tonight West Virginia wins by 1,000. Going to be tough. Mm -hmm. I think that pit team's ready to go. Yeah. But I am excited to be back into a, a state of mind, which hasn't happened, I don't think, ever, where I'm like, yeah, I went to West Virginia. I was a part of that. I feel like I accomplished a lot. Yeah, I tweeted this this morning. It's the first time I've ever really done something like this about my college thing. But I feel like getting a lot of messages from a lot of people that I thought I let down and a lot of people that I thought would hate me forever and them sending me a message being like, bro, come the fuck on. We all hate it, but come on. 
I mean, I was a fucking guy, dude. Oh, yeah. I mean, two Weapon. different positions, two different positions. Mm-hmm. I was all American, all time leading scorer, obviously two time BCS champ because I rode coattails of that. Ray Guy finalist, grows a semi finalist, and uh, I don't talk about it ever. I, I always have my jersey here, but I never talk about it because if I was to talk about it, the only thing that's going to come up is how I should think about going back to that spot in my mind where I wanted to fucking kill myself. So. I am happy and proud of what I accomplished. I am lucky that I was a part of that team. I will never be able to go back and uh, make those kicks now, but I will say forever, fucking eat shit pit. Tonight, let's go. I hope Neil Brown finds a winner. It'll be a lot of weight off of my shoulders if they fucking win a national championship. That'd be fantastic. I don't know if it's going to be this year, but with Graham Harrell in there, yeah, true. Shots, we shall see. So I'm excited for tonight. For a lot of reasons, and uh, it feels like football is happening, happening right now.